Hi boys and girls, welcome back. You ready for some fun today? My riddle is, what did the right eye say to the left eye? Hmm, think about it. Today we're going to be reading, what if you had animal eyes? Be kind of fun, although I don't know if I want to look like that. Be kind of strange. What kind of eyes does she have? Let's find out. This is by Sandra Markle, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. What if one day when you woke up, the eyes on your face weren't yours? What if overnight, a wild animal eyes took their place? Be kind of fun to write about. Chameleon, a chameleon eyes stick out like twin telescopes. These cone-shaped bumps are actually fused together eyelids that open just enough to peek through. This limits the chameleon's views, but these eyes can do something very tri tricky. Each eye moves separately. That way the chameleon can look for prey such as cricket in two different directions at once. When a chameleon spots its prey, it focuses both eyes on it. That way it doesn't miss catching its meal. If you had chameleon eyes, you could probably look around the toy store fast to find exactly what you wanted. Ooh, what if you had golden eagle eyes? A golden eagle eye has laser sharp vision. This bird can see up to eight times better than most people. It can also spot its prey up to two miles away. In a flash, the golden eagle can shift its eyes from focusing on something far away to something up close. This is perfect for keeping an eagle eye on catching a fast hopping rabbit. Golden eagle's eyes have a third eyelid that sweeps across the eyes like windshield wipers, keeping them clean. Interesting. If you had eagle eyes, you could sit up high in the stadium and still see the football game. Dragonfly. A dragonfly's eyes are huge. They have to be because each dragonfly has up to 310,000 tiny lenses. A human eye only has one. Scientists aren't sure how dragonfly's brain creates images from all those lenses, but they do believe having so many lenses let the dragonfly spot movement fast. That's how a dragonfly can fly, see flying mosquito in time to catch it. A dragonfly has three small extra eyes that help guide its flight path by sensing bright, bright light and shadows. If you had dragonfly eyes, you would be a star reporter because you never miss any of the action. And there are the extra eyes. Kind of interesting. You have huge eyes too. What if you had a clouded leopard eyes? A clouded leopard's eyes have special mirror like at the back. This layer reflects light back through the retina, the part of the eye packed with light sensing cells. This helps a clouded leopard see when the, in the dim light at nighttime. That mirror-like layer is also what makes the clouded leopard eyes seem to glow. The clouded leopard has slit-shaped pupils, openings where light enters the eye. These can expand about 100 times to let more light in. A human's round pupils only expand about 10 times. If you had clouded leopard eyes, you'd never be surprised in a dark haunted house. Bullfrog. A bullfrog's eyes are on top of its head, so the frog can hide underwater and still watch out for enemies. Its eyes are also wide apart. That way, a bullfrog can see nearly all the way around itself without turning its head. But these eyes help a bullfrog do more than just see. When a bullfrog swallows, it closes its big, eye, big eyes. Its eyes sink down through the opening in its skull to help push the meal down its throat. Ugh. A bullfrog's eyes each have a third see through eyelid. When the bullfrog dives underwater, these eyelids slide over its eyes, the perfect built-in swim goggles. If you have bullfrog eyes, a blink will let you swallow a big bite. Four-eyed fish. A four-eyed fish really only has two eyes, but each eye has two different parts. Each of these four eyes has its own pupil. This fish keeps 
half of each eye underwater looking for the insects and smaller fish as it eats. It keeps the other half of each eye above the water watching for birds and other predators that are after a fish dinner. Boreid fish usually travel in groups called schools, so there's always lots of eyes watching in every direction. If you had four-eyed fish eyes, you could read a book while riding your bike and never take your eyes off the road. Pretty interesting, isn't it? See how you can see underwater and on top of the water. Yellow mongoose. A yellow mongoose's eyes have rectangular pupils. This, these give it very wide view of its world. That means the mongoose can easily spot insects and lizards to catch and eat. It also keeps watch for hunters, such as jackals, sneaking up from the far left or right. When there is danger, its special eyes also help it spot out escape routes. The yellow mongoose is mainly active during the daytime when it can see best. Fact, to further see and peek over bushes, the yellow mongoose stands up tall on its hind feet. If you had a yellow mongoose eyes, you'd always win at laser tag. See it standing up on its hind feet. <clears throat> If you had the eyes of a colossal squid, a colossal squid has the biggest eyes in the world. Each eye is as big as a soccer ball. Woo! At the back of each eye is a part that produces its own light. It's like having built-in flashlights that are always on and glowing brightly. This makes it easy for the colossal squid to find fish to eat, even though it lives down deep in the ocean where it's always dark. Fact, scientists can't take photos of living colossal squid because they live so deep underwater. Our closest peak is seeing their cousin, the giant squid, but their eyes can't produce light. I never knew that. If you had colossal squid eyes, you could go on nighttime hikes without a flashlight. Huge, bigger than the giant squid. Llama. A llama has black bubble-like crystals that form a fringe at the top and bottom of its pupils where light enters the eyes. In bright sunlight, these crystals turn into bands that stretch across their pupils. These bands block so much light from entering the llama's eye that it's like having built-in super dark sunglasses. A llama's thick bushy eyelashes also make great sunshades. A llama's, llama's extra long eyelashes let it feel when it's getting close to something so it doesn't get poked in the eye. If you had llama eyes, you wouldn't be blinded by the bright spotlights during your big solo. Desert Horned Viper. A desert horned viper eyes have clear eyelids that do not open or close. That means this snake can't blink to clean its eyes but it doesn't need to. Its eyelids work like safety goggles because it lives in hot deserts. The viper usually waits until it's cooler at night to go hunting. Then the snake's slit-shaped pupils open wide so it can find a mouse or lizard for dinner. Fact, each time a desert horned viper sheds its scaly skin for a new one, it gets cl new clear eyelids too. I didn't know that. If you had horned viper eyes, you wouldn't need safety goggles to do science experiments. Tarsier. A tarsier's eyes are a huge part of its little body. Each giant, uh, its giant's eyes and large pupils are perfect for hunting tiny insects during dark nights. A tarsier can't move its eyes because of how its skull bones support them. Luckily, it can turn its head far enough around to look over its shoulder and see what's behind it. That way, it can keep an eye out for predators such as wildcats and large snakes. In fact, each of the tarsier's giant eyes weighs more than its brain. If you had tarsier eyes, you could easily watch a game for base stealers in time to throw them out. Those big eyes. Wild animals could be fun for a while. You don't, but you don't need your eyes to light the way or to look in direction, two directions at once. And you never use your eyes to spot something two miles away to help you swallow your dinner. So if you could keep wild animal eyes for which, more than a day, what kind would be right for you? Hmm, what, what do you think? Luckily, you don't have to choose. Your eyes will always be people eyes. 
They'll be what you need to read books, check out the stars at night, and see the people you love all of the time. It has here the different parts of your eyes. Interesting. Okay, so what did the right eye say to the left eye? There's between you and me, something smells. Get it? Between your eyes is your nose and it smells. Okay. You ready to do some fun activity? This one kind of has to do with the golden eagle. We're going to make paper planes. And we had a flyover today, which will be tomorrow for you. So I thought it'd be fun to make some. Disney is coming off, out with a new movie. Um, I'm not sure what it's called. And August 9th. But we have some of the planes from that movie and we'll make some paper planes. I'll be right back. Okay, boys and girls, I have a confession to make. I'm not very good at folding paper airplanes. I've already done three. They've turned out okay, but not perfect. So I'm gonna do the fourth one with you. I bet you'll have better results than I do. But you know what? I'm not upset, I just keep trying. I'm gonna turn my camera down and let's see, I'll show you what we get. Here is what comes in the bundle with the paper airplanes. It's free, I'll put it in the email. Ah. Camera doesn't wanna stay. Okay, close enough, right? Okay, and I'll just move it close. Boom! <laughs> or we can fall over. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, got it fixed so not everything's falling on top of me. So what's nice is they have the directions and the paper to fold with the cool designs. So I'm gonna do this. It says, okay, so with the white side of the paper, you make a rectangle. So the white side of the paper first, choose fold it so the colored is on the inside and so unfold it so it lays flat again now fold the two left corners to you and i think it's upside down so the two left corners towards me me okay maybe this way and there's night there's lines here so you can see where to fold Hopefully this is to me. I don't know. Now it's towards the couch. We'll see. Okay. Kind of looks like this. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Now, fold the triangle you created with the first set of folds towards you, but to the second indicator line. Okay. There's one line here, and there's one line here. So I'm going to fold it to the second line. Right there. Okay. And now I see I have one line here and one line here. So the, the point lines up with the center of the rectangle. Now fold the two top corners towards you again, but this time start to fold out from the center a little bit so the corners touch in the center of the airplane where it's folded. So it kind of wants to look like this, I hope. This is where I go, I don't know. But I'm having fun, and I can see the little triangle is there. And fold back the triangle that peeks out. So I'm folding that back. Now that holds it to place. Flip the airplane over so the design is now facing me. And fold it in half towards me on the dashed line. Okay, this is six and seven. So it should be facing this way on the dashed line. Okay, and we're gonna fold it like that. Looks right. Kind of on the dashed line. Now fold down the wings on both sides. There's a dash right here, I'm assuming there. Hey, this is the first one that actually got the name in the right place. Woohoo! Hey, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Okay, I think I'm gonna take these seats. If you look at before, I think this one was supposed to have the, the name, here's the name, it was supposed to be up here, but it turned out I have this one, which the name, I think I did it upside down, but it still works, they all still work. This one, what did I do here, oh, okay. There we go. Maybe I'm supposed to do it this way. 
Hey. Who knows? But let's take them outside and see if we can fly. Okay? Okay, boys and girls, I'm out here in my front yard. I'm gonna see, I have my aviator scarf on. I'm gonna see which airplane goes the fastest. I'm gonna stand behind the camera and throw it and we're gonna see how far they go. That's why it's kind of my neighborhood here. Now, the first one I'm going to throw is the one I did right, the one I made for you. Rochelle, let's see. Okay, Rochelle, go. Whoa, she hit the flag. <laughs> the next is, it's a little windy is, oh, my favorite name, Chubacabra. Okay, let's see how far this one will go. Woo, pretty far. The next one is a Shawnee. It's, I think it's the prettiest one, kind of like a rainbow. Let's see how far. Whoop, <laughs> kind of stuck in the ground there. And the last one, I think it was my first plane try. Let's see, it is dusty. Okay, let's see how dusty flies. It has a flat tip, does that make a difference? Whoa, kind of fun, you got some air there. It's kind of fun, I might have to practice again. Well, boys and girls, that was fun. I got outside, I can see now, I think, was it Chubacabra that went the farthest? I think so. Look at them, why? Maybe it's heavier the way you fold it. This one has a flat top. Why do they go certain ways? There's six planes in all. I'll put the link at the end of this video, I hope, if I can attach it. If not, it'll be in the email. I miss you, I love you, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.